Hello and welcome to Raven Art Paintings. Today we're gonna paint The Witcher from the Viper School. The only reference for this mini is the character card. As you can see there is not much details on it. So we're gonna use our own initiative and we're gonna uh, improvise quite a lot. I hope you enjoy this video. I hope you enjoy my version of the Viper, the Witcher of the, from the Viper School. Uh, I'm gonna improvise quite a lot in this video, so forgive me that you know some things might uh, come up uh, later on. The mini was primed with the black primer. Uh, again, uh, uh, we have to remove the excessive amount of plastic before we go. There's a quite a lot on this model as well. This model have quite a lot of details, but in my mini that I had in my board game. Quite a lot of them are pretty flattened, so it's very hard to see whatever there is a uh, stripe or something else on the mini. So it's hard to hard to decide what to do where. So quite a lot of things will come up as we go. Uh, I decide that the main color of the mini will be green, so we're gonna use quite a lot of green accent on this. Initially, I paint the skin with the. Uh, Ratkin flesh and uh, we're gonna then uh, do our brighter tone using uh, the Cadian flesh tone and the Kislev flesh that will be the later stage of painting this mini so bear with me uh, this movie is quite long uh, I hope you forgive me this time uh, I will try to shrink uh, uh, my next clip uh, a little bit more Unless you like that lens, so please write in the comments which you prefer that I will cut it a little bit more or are you happy with the length of approximately 30 to 40 minutes. So uh, once again we're painting initially we, we painted this all the skin with uh, with the Cadian flesh tone. Uh, there is not a lot, there is a uh, there is his face with uh, with a little bit of the neck, his uh, arms and the fingers. Also just to let you know the list of all the paints that I have used to paint this mini will be at the end of this video. Uh, next we're gonna move to our uh, green tone which is the Waga Flesh and we're gonna paint uh, his, uh, let's call it a t-shirt. Uh, so there is a bit uh, of uh, the sleeves, the hood in the back and a little bit on the bottom uh, under his uh, belt. So that's the main uh, part of his clothing that we're gonna paint in green. Also, uh, if you like this channel and if you'd like this channel to grow over, please don't forget to click the subscribe button so you're not gonna miss any further video and just as well to feed the gods of the YouTube the subscribe button is essential thank you very much next we're gonna switch over to the steel legion drop from Citadel and we're gonna paint all the stripes strings you name it uh, everything that's on his uh, that's on this mini uh, with the kind of leather uh, light uh, leather effect we're gonna paint with the steel legion drop further up we're gonna use the zandri dust our, as our brightest bright stone to highlight those bits i'm gonna also use the steel legion drop to uh, paint the sword hilt and again don't forget that if you're gonna make any mistake at this stage it's an easy fix uh, you can always go back to your uh, to your previous colors as you can see you know I'm fixing with the green now whatever the 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 brush slip over now we're gonna paint uh, the uh, the leather and we're gonna use the mix of the scrag brown and the rhinox hide uh, we're gonna use mainly two tones uh, the trousers will be painted with a little bit brighter uh, mix of uh, those two colors 
and the the, the, the leather armor uh, that uh, he's uh, wearing will be the mix of it will be mix of again those two colors like scrap brown and the rhinox house but a little bit darker uh, tone so just to achieve the uh, the darker one simply add more rhinox height and again for the brighter one uh, like for the trousers you uh, you add uh, more uh, scrag uh, brown uh, the reference you can see it on my uh, on my wet palette as well at this stage Also, as you can see now, uh, when I'm putting a second layer of that brown color on the trousers, I do a little bit of the uh, wet blending with the uh, pure sprag brown as well, just to brighten up, especially on the top surface of those, of those trousers. I have also painted the uh, dagger scabbard with the pure uh, sprag brown. No, the boots itself are painted with the uh, pure Rhinox hide. Now we're gonna paint the sword scabbard and we're gonna use the gorter brown for this purpose. Next. Next we're gonna switch to the Zantry Dust and we're gonna paint uh, the base itself uh, and mainly uh, we're looking after the, the broken pillar that he's standing off and the pieces uh, pieces that are lying down broke, broken underneath but because we prime our mini black and I want the, the tiles on the base to be bright uh, we might just as well cover the whole lot just to simplify the, the process. Next we're gonna use the Balthazar Gold and we're gonna paint uh, a little bit on the dagger so we're gonna paint the dagger's head, the cross guard, we're also gonna paint the armor above his uh, belt and as well as the armbands on his hands. Now we're gonna move to the uh, lead belcher mixed with the hexra flame. Uh, we're gonna uh, add a tiny bit of the green tone to, to, to our uh, dark uh, silver. And we're gonna paint the dagger itself and we're gonna paint the, the main sword uh, head and the cross guard with, with our uh, metallic mix. We're also gonna paint his medallion with our silver and we're gonna paint the stripes on the dagger scabbard. As well we're gonna paint uh, all the buckles here and there on the stripes on his armor and as well like on his boots.
Now we're gonna switch to the Mephiston Red and we're gonna paint a couple of the potion bottles. And there's two, uh, circle one on the left of his back and we're gonna use uh, the red tone to paint those. Next, the, the other one on the right hand side, we're gonna mix the Ogryn Kama with a little bit of the Hexra Flame and we're gonna uh, put a nice kind of greenish turquoise uh, color on those on the right. Now I'm switching to the ivory from Vallejo and I'm gonna paint the tiles of the base itself. Now, as I want to achieve a bit of a natural stone effect, so I'm gonna use our uh, skin tone, the Ratkin Flesh Stone, and as well as the Rhinox Height, and uh, paint uh, the random uh, stripes on, on the floor, tie floor, uh, here and there. We're gonna finish it off later on with some wash, and we're gonna have a nice kind of natural stone. Uh, uh, tile effect. Now we're gonna move to some uh, shading stage, so we're gonna use a couple of washes. So initially I started with the Seraphim Sepia and I'm painting the all the base itself, so the tiles and the, uh, the pieces of the pillar uh, and the pillar itself uh, as well. Yeah, so this is our base covered with our wash. However, as I said earlier on, uh, the model is pretty flat, so this is an easy way to miss something. I missed a uh, few stripes in the back, so as you can see, I'm painting them over again with the uh, Steel Legion wrap. I also decide to, uh, to paint, as I did it in the back, I decide to paint this uh, his belt in front with, with the same color uh, team. And again, we're going back to our ivory, and this time we're gonna uh, put paint the, uh, the eyes white with, with our ivory from Vallejo. I also want to put a bit of a color on his uh, mouth, so I'm mixing a little bit of the Mephiston Red with the Bookman's Glow. Uh, uh, just just so his lips will stand off a little bit from uh, the Redkin flesh which is already a uh, pretty uh, dark skin tone. Next we're gonna uh, put a bit of a green wash on uh, his green clothing, in this case we're using the Bieltan green from Citadel. Now we're gonna switch to the Rayclan Flesh Shade and we're gonna put the wash all over his skin. And once all those washes dry off then we can switch to the Agrax Earth Shade and we're gonna uh, cover it uh, the rest which is boots trousers his uh, armor and his weapons
now this is how our mini looks so far and we're gonna move to some to do some highlights uh, our first step we're gonna get back to our uh, ivory tone and we're gonna uh, cover his uh, uh, white in his uh, eyes as we put a wash you know, they've been darkened a bit here and there so it's just a small correction at this point And then we proceed with our first uh, first highlights. So we're gonna start with uh, his skin, and uh, we're gonna start over with the pure uh, rat skin flesh. And our next step will be adding a bit Caden flesh tone. Then we we'll add adding a little bit more of the Kislev flesh, and our final brightest tone of his skin will be pure Kislev flesh. Make sure you uh, have the right consistency of your paint uh, as we don't want that paint to be too thick we want that uh, paint to be uh, transparent so uh, make sure you have the right consistency you put uh, enough water again you don't want to uh, put too much water uh, as then you're gonna be building up uh, some areas which more ink uh, pigment more pigment than the other but again very watery but not too watery and we paint it over first of all with the pure uh, rat skin flesh and then when we will be adding a bit more cadence uh, flesh tone uh, to it remember we cover it a little bit less of the surface with every layer so we built up the uh, the brightest tone mainly on uh, the, the top top surface if you have if you struggle which uh, part should be the brightest one simply you know put the torch above your mini lighted it over and you see what areas the lights is coming uh, most and those those parts should be should be the brightest uh, parts uh, on your on your mini. Now I will be adding a bit more Kisla flesh, as I said earlier on. Our mix of the Ratskin flesh and Kadian flesh tone will be further lighting up with the Kisla flesh. And towards the end, our final uh, final layer will be pure, uh, pure piece of flesh. So this is how our mini looks like and we're gonna do uh, the ice pupils. I decided to use flat medium blue from Italeri uh, but you can use any other color you like. Uh, when I'm painting those I usually add a little bit of the medium just to extend the drying time of the paint on the brush so, so we have that flexibility and just nice wee dot on each eye should do the job again don't worry if you won't get successful at the first time uh, you might also get back to your ivory correct the the eye white and do it all over again
Now we're gonna paint his eyebrow and we're gonna mix the uh, black, Abaddon black from Citadel with, uh, with our uh, flat blue from Italeri, uh, a nice two stripe one above each eye should do the job. Next we're gonna switch to Storm Vermin Fuhrer and we're gonna do a bit of a highlights on his uh, hairs. Uh, again the hairs on this mini are pretty flat so uh, it's uh, very hard to pick it up. There, there is no recesses especially down in the back uh, but we can do our best so you know with your fine brush uh, paint over a couple of stripes with the but the uh, grey tone it doesn't have to be that one as long as it can be like a medium uh, medium uh, grey tone and once that done I uh, use a watery mix of our blue and black just to uh, do a nice transition between that uh, grey and black remember the black is not always pure black we need to add a bit of a color to it, we need to add a bit of a highlight, that's why we're gonna use those. Uh, at this point I will be doing the highlights of his uh, clothing, green clothing, so we're gonna get back to our original green uh, Waga flesh and we're gonna add a little bit of the Everland uh, Sunset. Uh, every layer we're gonna move on, we're gonna be adding more and more Avalad Sunset so we're gonna start from from the dark uh, green and then as we go along we will be brightening up so the, our final final uh, layer final stage will be the the nice kind of uh, light very light green uh, green shade uh, don't forget when you're doing that that we put a little bit of that green uh, underneath his uh, armbands so there is uh, a little bit green above and below the armbands and we want that uh, to be nicely highlighted as well Next we're gonna move to our original mix of the Rhinox Hide and the Scrag Brown and we're gonna do a bit of a highlighting on his armor. Uh, initially we add a tiny bit of the Scrag Brown to our uh, Rhinox Hide and as we go along we will be adding more and more and more. Uh, and then we do a tiny uh, bit uh, of the... Uh, of the Scrag, pure scrag brown here and there uh, towards the end. We also use the same mix to uh, to highlight his uh, shoes. Ah, we're also going to use a uh, mix of those two colors to highlight our uh, trousers. With the difference is we're going to start from a uh, much brighter tone and again we're going to finish with much uh, brighter tone. Towards the end we're going to add a little bit of yellow uh, to, to our brown just, just to bring them up far far brighter than uh, the rest of his armor.
Next I want to achieve a bit of worn out or dirt effect so I used a little bit of the dishwashing sponge put in the tweezers we mixed uh, our brown with a bit of ivory and steel legion drop so we got in a kind of a very bright uh, color and we literally stipple here and there on the top of uh, his knees just just to have that uh, dirt effect there uh, for all the stripes again we go back to our uh, steel legion drop we're gonna first of all highlight uh, all of those with the stone then we're gonna add a bit more uh, zandri dust uh, just to bring them up a little bit more just to get a bit of more contrast and again the final stage you might add a little bit of, of the ivory to uh, to the zandri dust uh, just to do a bit of a edge uh, highlighting here and there if you want In our next stage we're gonna do a bit of a dry brushing on the base itself, mainly on that uh, column and the couple of stones that line down here and there. So we're gonna start over with the, with the Zandri dust and we're gonna do a bit of a dry brushing here and there. And once we move along we're gonna add a little bit of the, uh, of the ivory from Vallejo and mix it over with the Zantri dust and do a dry brushing uh, a little bit softer uh, at this point and our final stage we're gonna do a pure uh, ivory but we're gonna literally gently touch on the top of the surfaces. Now, so our model uh, started getting the shape, now we're gonna do a bit of highlighting on those potion uh, flasks uh, down in back so uh, we can go back to our Mephisto red we can brighten up a little bit with uh, with our yellow uh, just to have the uh, a lighter shade of that red but I decided to on the uh, second one to put a uh, tro troll slayer orange uh, just to have that uh, effect of two different uh, two different portions. As you can see I forgot to do a bit of a highlighting on the uh, sword hilt so there you go I'm fixing it now. Uh, so again the same process as we did with the stripes so with the uh, silicon drop and Zandri dress later on. Now we're switching back to our gorter brown we're gonna do a bit of dry brushing on the sword scabbard and there is a nice wee pattern uh, on it but it would be very hard to pick it up any other way than the dry brushing uh, unless you want to spend hours on it and so we use pure gorton brown initially and then we will be adding a little bit of the ivory from Vallejo just, just uh, to bring it up a little bit more and again a bit of a dry brushing with the uh, Balthazar uh, gold, uh, but the, ba the dry brushing only on the on the armbands. The rest uh, we're gonna use traditional uh, brush and do a bit of highlighting on that dagger and on the armor above his belt. In our next step, we're gonna switch back to the lead belcher. At this time, we're gonna use pure lead belcher. And we're gonna do a bit of a highlighting on uh, all the kind of silver metal parts. Again, we're gonna highlight all the uh, buckles uh, all over uh, the mini. There's quite a few of them. The the sword of the dagger. Uh, so all of those, all of those we will be highlighting uh, with the pure uh, lead belcher. As you can see I add a little bit of medium to that paint again you know if you do a tiny tiny little uh, pieces you know the paint might dry off too quickly on your brush so 
you know a little bit of the medium will give you that extra time uh, drying time on your brush to, to, to paint those uh, little tiny details As you probably noticed, he has a wee back on his back, the size of the purse, and we're gonna do a bit of a dry brushing with, uh, with the pure scrap brown. There is a nice wee uh, pattern standing out, so just yeah, just to give that pattern a little bit stand up, do a bit of a uh, dry brushing with the with the scrap brown. We we'll switch back for a moment to the Seraphine Sepia wash, and we're gonna paint the sword uh, health just to have the bit nicer transition of those colors that we put it on there for the tiles on the base itself i want them to be a bit more shiny so we put in a nice uh, layer of the art coat from citadel for the mini rim itself i improvise a bit so i start over with the waga flesh then i add a little bit of yellow just to make it a bit uh, lighter green and towards the end I still wasn't happy with the effect so I put a tape coat of the Hexra Flame towards, uh, towards the end just to have that nice kind of green uh, effect. I still wasn't happy with the base so I decided to put a bit of an ivy uh, growing over uh, the, uh, the ruin, the pillar ruin so uh, I did kind of a nice uh, climbing pattern of those green uh, stuff uh, growing, uh, growing over. So this is how it looks so far. Uh, and one more tiny piece in front. And to give uh, a bit more depth to that, uh, a little bit of the green wash, the Bialtan green from Citadel on those. So this is how the model looks so far and it's not the end yet. So our final touch will be a bit of a witcher oil on the sword and the uh, used uh, pot, potion pot underneath. So I used the hydrogel from the packaging, just sand it over to, to reduce the size of it, uh, paint it with the uh, hexra flame uh, green and towards the end I glue it a tiny wee cork that I made from the uh, from the toothpick and once that was done I glue it over uh, to the base which you can see later on for the uh, for the oil itself um, I decide to uh, to go with the uh, UV raisin uh, mixed with the same color again the extra flame uh, and uh, it's a very handy uh, thing because it's drying very very uh, quickly all you need is a uh, wee torch UV torch and you can you can play uh, as you go so as you can see now I'm mixing uh, a, a color with the with the UV you know, raisin and added a little bit uh, to uh, to my mini uh, once you put a bit of uh, UV light uh, over it, it uh, dries instantly, literally in seconds. Uh, so you can uh, you can actually apply in this as you go. I decided to put we dripping uh, from the from the dagger. Uh, it is a bit of process. You, you might practice it before, but uh, I think towards the end it was well worth it. It uh, gives that nice effect of the dripping, uh, uh, dripping uh, uh, poison from from the uh, from that dagger. Uh, again, uh, it dries off instantly, so you can uh, you can work it with the with the the torch on while you while you're doing it and 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 build it up uh, layer by layer uh, that tiny we drop. I know it's not entirely in the scale but uh, to have that nice effect 
it has to be a little bit bigger rather than you wouldn't you wouldn't have that uh, kind of cool effect of dripping the poison from it yeah so this is how the mini looks so far there is one final uh, thing uh, i forgot to do it earlier on so put a bit of the uh, shiny art coat on the potion bottles and this is it the mini is ready so thanks for watching it and I hope you find those videos useful, I hope you enjoy watching it, my painting and I hope you like them. Uh, if so please give the thumb up and don't forget to subscribe uh, the channel so you're not gonna miss any further videos. Uh, once again thanks for watching and see you next time on my next clip. Thank you very much, take care, bye now.